you like what you just saw on this video, this will be the topic of today. Not actually a music player, but that music player was actually possible because authorization kit allows you to sign in in third party services, for example, in this case, Spotify, which retrieved all of my liked songs until I believe the first 50, and it just allowed me to play on Spectacles. The way I logged into Spotify was very easy, it was very streamlined, and you can really apply this to every sort of application. But I'm very excited to get into the details of this project, uh, which by the way is available in the description below. I don't do any tutorial if I actually do not provide you these templates, so don't be afraid. Everything I say is already part of this sample that you can just try anytime after this video. So let's get into the details without further ado, let's get started and understand how the authorization kit works. So if you want to get started with the authorization kit, the page to get started and understanding how this works is here in the documentation. You can go in the spectacle section and then you go in the frameworks section here and then we see that there is auth kit. We go in getting started and this gives you a full overview of how this works. It tells you that it's based on the OAuth2 protocol, which is a very common protocol that a lot of website and application use to log in. You're required to use this kit to import it, of course, in Lens Studio, and then starting a new project, basically, this is really all you need. You need to import this package, and then you need to fulfill this structure that will require you a bunch of IDs for you to log in. And in the case of Spotify, all you will need is really your client ID that you will get from your uh, Spotify dashboard as a developer. You need, will need to create an application, and when you create an application, you will get usually that ID. This is something very common, and I'm not sure how familiar you are with the other sort of classic web development, but it's something pretty common that there is the step of getting an ID, and then this ID is basically your developer ID that allows the app to just use certain services of the app, so the API of the service. And then based on the user that enter in your service, that's actually the login that will be reserved to an external user. So that login, like common username and password will be different for anyone using your app that is being made through your dashboard as a developer with your ID. So your responsibility. The basic usage is here and it shows you really how to do it. And there's not a lot of creativity. I would say here, there's nothing crazy. You will have to refresh a certain token and these token will be Usually this token needs to be refreshed any sort of certain amount of time because otherwise for safety reason, of course, you cannot always be logged in in one application. And then once you check the authorization status, you are authorized to sign in. Then of course you can sign out at any time. Configuration options. This is really all you need to know. And based on the service that you're using, there might be different requests. For example, once again, in Spotify, I was just asked to enter the client ID. Must know about this kit is that you cannot test this actually in Lens Studio. You must actually test on Spectacles. This goes for also a lot of other features like GPS, for example. And ensure that the Spectacles app, the one that you have on your phone, is installed because that's essential for you to log in. Without being too abstract about all of this, let's actually see a pragmatic use case because I think that you cannot really generalize a lot because this is really reserved to third-party services. So it's also depending from what you're using. Let's take the case of Spotify, which has a very cool API that you can hook up on your services for play songs or retrieve information from the user that are entering in your space. Uh, of course, always within the boundary of what is allowed to be done. But here, it's very straightforward. You will need to go on your Spotify developer dashboard, which for me is here. And then you will take a look at the application that you have. For example, for me, there is the Spectacles application. And then whenever you open it, there are some basic information that of course I blurred out in this video, but all you will need to do is clicking on this client ID and copy and pasting it in the template that I provided you. If you just do that and then you build the app on specs, that is being supposed to work as you saw in the video when this video started, the as you saw in the video introduction. You will need to fill out the app creation form. And another thing that you might be familiar Another thing that you might not be familiar with is the scopes of your application. Usually when you create an application, this goes for Spotify, but goes for also other services. We're not sponsoring Spotify here. It's just a very simple example, by the way. We'll be asked to set certain scope that are level of access for the users, right? So here, for example, you see user read private, so you can access user subscription details and country and so on. So these are all things that you can include in your scopes. And the more you have, of course, the more you can do with the data of the user that enters your application. Of course, Spotify, like many other services, does not allow you to do everything you want. And 
Personally, I worked a lot with Spotify API. It's actually very limited. So don't think that now you can actually jump on top of another services and get everything that this services has in your own application. You probably have some quota. You probably have some limit. I believe the Spotify limit for users in your application is 25. And after that, you need to refresh some request. You need to actually s submit a request that, for, that will be reviewed by a person in the, Spotify, in, in the Spotify office. So just be aware that it's not that you can do everything, but depending always to the service that you are working with. In this case, once again, this example is Spotify. So here we have some example for scope combination. We have, if you want to just play back, probably this is what you will need. This is kind of like a shortcut for you. And this is a, a full implementation of your Spotify controller. Just, uh, let's say if you copy paste this file, which is already part of the sample that I provided in the description, all you will need is just an access. So you will just log in into the service and you will be basically logged in and you can do other stuff. What I built on top of this was actually retrieving songs, of course, because that's the thing that you want to do on Spotify and also playing the songs. So hooking up the audio output from Blend Studio and taking advantage of basically reference a URL and playing that URL of that song uh, in the lens when you're wearing the spectacles. Once, something I want to say is that when I try to do that, I noticed that Spotify recently, actually, this is something that I also brought up in the samples that I shared on my GitHub and it guides you through everything you have to do, but there is actually an officially deprecated API that is the API that provides you the preview URL. So meaning that this is the only way to play the songs in a way. You cannot play a whole song from Spotify, otherwise you will replace Spotify, right? But what you can do is reference those previews and play through the Spotify player or play just a small part of that URL without any preview. So in this case, what I was trying to do was just basically just playing that URL through using our internet access API and that wasn't working. So what I did, and there is also some recommendation here and in other blogs, is basically just getting those songs, those IDs that are common across different API and just playing it with a preview URL from another API, which maybe is public. And in my case, I think I used uh, the Deezer API and I used the Apple Music API. I think those two were the backup if Spotify URL for the preview was not available. But without further ado, let's get into Lens Studio so you know where to find these examples. You also know that you have available these sample in the description, so it's all done for you. And since I'm here, I just want to remind you that we have a bunch of samples in this public repo, all available for you for spectacles to boost your learning journey and just get up to speed with everything you can do and just trying to mix all of these together, really creating incredible lenses. This is the application and you can see it's quite like a very familiar shape. Uh, if you know what is the iPod, you probably recognize right away what is this. And uh, you can also change the shade, by the way. This was just basically something very quick that I put together. But I'm actually very curious about, since I've done this for you, I feel like if I pick up this uh, sample, what I would focus on would be how to visualize music in a different way. And maybe not adding maybe music visualizer, but just like how actually we render a music controller when we are using spectacles. Probably we don't want to have a big panel in front of us. Probably we want to have something that is kind of smaller on the side or has a different shade. Maybe it's not vertical, maybe it's more horizontal, so it doesn't take so much of my field of view. So I really hope that you can take these little comments and just build up something better than what I did. Here, when you will open the sample, you will notice that the packages are all zipped, so meaning that they are not accessible. And then we have three folder, that we have we have two folders the first one is the render so you don't want to touch that and then we have spotify example all you need to know are these two scripts which i also reference in the spotify music controller the first one here at the bottom is the one that actually you saw in the documentation i literally just copy pasted it i didn't modify anything and that's why i call it spotify controller minimum because everything it does it really says hey you logged in successfully but then there is this other one which is called spotify music controller and I started to mix up the potentiality of Lens Studio and Spectacles. I referenced an image to get the preview of the track and I get the audio to play the sound from API of Spotify and the preview URL. I got some text, which eventually I render if I want to know the title. And finally, I have the reference for all of the buttons that come in this case from the SIK. So you will see all of these buttons here. And I have tons of logs because I like to have a lot of logs when I'm testing on device or not on device. So let's open the scripts of this project. Another thing that I want to mention here is when you don't know what you're doing perfectly and you're learning a new API, 
set yourself up for success, right? First of all, you notice that I'm using cursor, which is an amazing IDE, but you probably notice that I also have a context folder and this context folder is very good because it allows you to lock down all of the parts that you need to achieve this Spotify controller application. In this case, for example, I created, I went on the Lens Studio documentation and I copy paste to cursor all of the information that I could find about audio components. So all of these is the API for audio components, how to play, how to stop, how to pause, and so on. Then I did the same thing with the outflow. I got like three pages, two, two pages, I believe, actually three or four. And then I went on the internet access because I was like, I want to play a, a preview URL. So I actually need to stream some sort of like URL from the internet and just create a buffer that then goes into the audio output. So I was like, not too familiar with that, but I feel like there's something to do with the internet access API because I'm actually getting a URL. Then I'm getting here the pinch button because I have a lot of buttons and I just want to pinch them to do an action. So I was not even bothering to just write everything myself, right? I know how to create events to hook up buttons and I have this perfect, this very well descriptive and very much correct code here from the Essential project, which is just pasted here. So I'm like, not going to bother even to do that one. And then this part is all part of the documentation from the authorization flow. So just once again, this is very much of a small detail, but set yourself up for success, ask a question to cursor and reference these four or five uh, files here. You're going to get incredible results and it might be done just in one minute instead of spending time. And then just go back and take a look at what happened when you have this full controller here and study it and understand what happened there. So you're kind of reverse engineering. Uh, at least this is how I like doing things since AI exists, right? Before it wasn't that really possible. Let's use it. So in this case, you will see that uh, I have a reference to the Spotify API. And what I did was getting all of the endpoints, first of all, of what you can do on Spotify. So I want to go next. I want to go previous. I want to play and pause and so on. So these are all of the things that if I make a website and reference the Spotify endpoints API, these are the endpoints that allow me to do this specific actions with the music. Then I have another music API. This was actually something I did later because I noticed that no preview was actually playing from Spotify. And then I realized that that was deprecated uh, very recently. So I had to find an alternative. And then I understood how the Spotify track interface does because you basically need to retrieve, right? You need to retrieve information from the Spotify track. And this is what we care about. We care about the preview URL of the Spotify track. Unfortunately, this is not available now. So it's something that really blocked me for a little and understanding, well, this should be actually very easy, but for some reason, you cannot really predict how API are evolving in time. And here really starts our script. So all of these inputs that you see here are, of course, things that are referenced in the inspector. So these are all the inputs that you see. And after the inputs, we start to reference some modules that we have in Lens Studio. And we start, of course, to talk about the, we, we start to reference also the authorization kit, which we also imported. It's the first thing that actually we imported in the script. And then we just repeat what we actually saw in the documentation. We initialize the authorization with the Spotify configuration. And then we have certain update. We have start, update, and then we also have this other update UI at start. Then we bind all the buttons. So we do what was available in our context folder for the pinch button. So we bind all of these methods to the buttons and have a lot of print statement here, which you can disregard, but it really helps actually to understand what's going on and you never really have surprise. So you might remove them all, but I feel like also Claude or, or ChatGPT really love to have prints because anytime that there is an issue, all you have to do is really just copy paste the error that you're getting. And usually all of those prints are super descriptive and the bug is just found right away. We also have an audio component, which is in the scene. And I want to just show you how this looks like. This is an audio component here, which you can create with a plus button. And just it's the first thing actually that you see popping in the scene, that you see popping in the list. This audio track also, you can click mix to snap, meaning that this will be actually captured if you do a capture on device. And I put it full volume because I love to hear very loud music, even in the capture. And then we have part where I was mentioning the part that we actually bind all of the buttons. So very much methodical. We see that on sign in button, trigger start, we actually do on sign in, on sign out, on play, on pause, stop, and next. And you can, if you don't know what this is doing, you're just gonna go find it. This is actually what is happening on the sign in. Let's actually check out 
what is happening, if we can just understand what's going on without all of those print messages. Basically, we authorize the scope. So we take a look at the scopes that we set at the very beginning. In this case, for me, is this. I actually put it private because I don't want you to change things in the specter just for mistake and then it doesn't work anything anymore. So I put it private for now. And then we are loading the song on all of the on when the authorization is successful. When we load all the song, we have all of the preview available and then we can actually play them. So we have all of the other method, which is play, pause, so on. Update UI because actually every time that I'm switching track, I want to update text and I want to understand what's the new song name. So the song name is part of that structure of retrieval, that interface of the track of Spotify that we have at the very beginning, which is right before here. So we get actually name, we get images, and also here, by the way, for rendering images, of course, it's not we are downloading the images, we are visualizing this. And this is all possible again. Let's see how we mix things together. If we go on our API and then we go on our internet access, you go on accessing remote media and you have example of every format. Once again, don't do this on a local host. That does not work on spectacles. So make sure that you're not running that on localhost, that you're actually interfacing with a service which has things that are hosted somewhere. Then we arrived at basically understanding that we... Basically, everything works really similar. It's quite repetitive. Let's see if there is anything more interesting to look at. I feel actually the more interesting part is understanding how the audio component work in uh, uh, Lens Studio. So you see that audio component here is playing. So this is how you play things. This is play preview. And maybe another thing that I want to show you is when we actually got those URL. So let's see when we actually create those URL. Track details URL. Let's see if we have some utility. Uh, this is search for preview URL because I was like, maybe there is not a preview URL on the Spotify track. And that's why we actually with some track it worked and some other one it didn't. And these are other music services. So I'm just going on Deezer, for example, here. So it's Deezer and search iTunes. Uh, we load the album hard work. So same thing. But actually, make restore. This is the method you need to know, which is also very similar for audio. I'm going to show the audio part as well. But this is how to turn an image uh, that you are downloading as a URL actually as something visible in your application. If you're wondering, well, I want to understand how to play the audio. So you go in here and you say load resource as audio track asset. So let's see in the code where is that happening. And there is exactly only one. And this is the place that we are loading the audio URL as audio track assets. And we are binding it to our audio output that will play finally the track. Because you see the audio here is empty. So this audio track is usually something that you can reference statically from your scene. So let's say that you have a little bit of an MP3 in your project, you want to drag and drop it. But in this case, because we are actually streaming a URL, we are actually making this in real time, right? We are just playing a stream in real time. I'm not downloading 50 songs and then playing them one by one. So you saw how easy it is to build something like this. Just imagine what are the possibility with this authorization kit. I wonder how many services you can log in and start to retrieve information based on those third-party API. This is super exciting because for me, it's like bringing existing services, existing utilities of our everyday life actually on glasses and make glasses more useful. So I hope that this was helpful for you. Don't forget to get the samples in the description. And also don't forget to subscribe if you liked this video and you thought it was helpful for you. Peace.